RT is sitting down with a former governor of Minnesota, TV personality, former U.S. Navy SEAL, and best-selling author Jesse Ventura. Thank you so much for joining us again. My pleasure. Always a pleasure. Your new book, 63 Documents the Government Doesn't Want You to Read. Yeah. How is this book new from what we have seen leak out in the past couple of months, especially, of course, when the WikiLeaks scandal broke? You have made comparisons saying that this book has the same spirit as those disclosures. Sure. Well, Are you on a mission to become the new Julian Assange? We started the book two months. We were already working on this book for two months, and then the WikiLeaks things ha thing happened, and we got excited. I mean, we jumped for joy, although we do use some of the WikiLeaks documents, but all these documents in this book are in the public domain. It's just you have to, mainstream media is not going to tell you, you got to go find the stuff. And that's what we did. The most difficult thing about doing this book was that these documents, you could substitute the word Nazi and it would work. And that troubles me because... Well, that's a pretty harsh statement. So well, can you give us some examples? Harsh. What do you mean? What did you discover working on this? Well, how about uh, the CIA's assassination manual? And one thing I want to say, all the documents are printed in the book. It's not me telling you about the documents. Assassination is just a fancy word for first degree murder. Now, how can the government have a, have a pamphlet or a book that tells you how to commit first degree murder? And who are we? Because there happens to be someone in another country that we don't get along with or maybe politically is opposite from us. What gives us the right to go murder this person? War is different. War is declared. It's between militaries and all that. Releasing those kinds of documents, what kind of purpose does that really solve? If we take the WikiLeaks scandal, for example, in the long run, what kind of purpose does it, it solve? It solves something called open government. We're supposed to be a democracy. I have every right to know what my government's doing. You want to know why? I pay taxes, and I have every right to know when they take money from me and put it into the public domain, I have every right to know what they're spending it on. Now, I understand there's certain secret things you have to put up with, but at the point when it's over, then the document should become public. Well, how about the document that we discovered in the late 40s, early 50s, where the United States went down to Nicaragua and rounded up a bunch of street people and infected them with syphilis? Why? Well, to see if penicillin worked. Now, these people were not volunteers, and it's damn lucky that penicillin worked. Because if it hadn't worked, these people would have died horrible deaths. You say you want to know what the government is up to. Do you think the rest of Americans want to know? They or ought is to it know. a lot easier living without some of this knowledge? Well, then if you live without this knowledge and you get bad government and you get the government abusing your rights, your civil rights, violating the Constitution, violating the Bill of Rights, you know, it's in a, in a democratic society, it is imperative for the public, the people, to be vigilant, to hold their elected f officials' feet to the fire. Speaking of accountability, do you feel in the era after the Bush administration where we have seen human rights violations, wars, torture, and so on and so forth, in the era after Wall Street where really no one was held accountable for what, what went down, uh, expecting this accountability, is that sort of way too optimistic or even naive at this point? It shouldn't be. It should not be. We should always demand accountability. They use our money. And when they're spending our money to, for mind control experiments and things like that, don't you think I have a right to know that so that I can voice an opinion and say, you know, I don't like it what my government's spending my money on. What happens after you voice that? What do you expect the rest of Americans to do if they, you know, agree with you and think that accountability should take place? What well, happens next? Well, to me, the, uh, the, the most, I, I believe that we need a revolution in our country. We can have a revolution. What I suggest is that we, uh, the next time we have an election here, vote for anyone but Democrats or Republicans. Anyone but them. Because they're bought and paid for. They've sold out to in multinational corporations. They're not making decisions to benefit our country. They're making decisions to benefit, benefit their benefactors. And they've sold their soul, as the old cliche goes, to rock and roll. It really feels like at this point... 
many Americans would support what you were saying in terms of something in the system has to change, especially over the last couple of years, what we have been seeing. But the majority still continues to support the mainstream political elite. It still is the Democrats and the Republicans. Mm -hmm. How many people and how much more time do you think it would change for people to really start coming out and voting for a third option? I don't know. But if they don't, then they deserve what they get, right? Look at last year. Let me tell you something. Do you know how many documents the U.S. government declared top secret last year in one year? Millions. 16 million. I would venture to say that must be every document they put out. Now, you're telling me that I, as a taxpayer, am not allowed to see 16 million documents in what is supposedly a free country? Where's that line between public interest and real danger that knowing this information could be causing? Well, to me, you draw the line as our lives in danger because of it. But the moment lives are no longer in danger, it should be made public. So unless the document would put somebody in absolute danger, and then again, you have it begs the question, what document would put you in danger and why then is it happening? What are you doing that requires you to cover up everything? 16 million documents I can't read? What kind of percentage do you think that is of the information being, do you think that's everything's being kept secret or? I, yeah, uh, I, 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 I can't fathom how they could have more than 16 million documents. What do they have, 50 million a year? I don't know. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit all right. and talk about current events. The war in Libya, what kind of role do you see the United States having played in that whole mission? Well. Libya is difficult because it certainly puts everyone between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, you feel, well, that's Libya's business. It's their country. If they want to overthrow their leader or change whatever they do in their country, you know, it's their business to do so. Is it necessarily our business? No. But here's the rock and hard place or the double-edged sword. You also don't want to see genocide or a slaughter take place because let's face it Gaddafi has all the guns and weapons and by the way where do you think he gets them from <laughs> where us we're the biggest arms dealer in the world you know and so you certainly don't want to see well how come we didn't intervene in Rwanda we show the documents in our book on that Rwanda you had the genocide of nearly a million people and nobody lifted a finger because Rwanda didn't have anything the international corporations needed. Libya has oil, so it's very important to get the oil. Rwanda didn't have anything like that, so in essence the world ignored it because there was nothing to go in there for that they could, for lack of a better term, rape and pillage mineral wealth, oil, or whatever else international corporations would need. Do you think the U.S. is going to play a bigger role in Libya than it claims now because they have said that NATO is now taking control of the operation. Do you think the U.S. is really stepping back or is there a lot of I have no idea. You know, I have no idea. I'm not privy. After all, they, they classify 16 million documents a year. How would I know? I Let's don't know. Talk about know. what has been going on within the United States then. I want to ask you about these, uh, really this middle class uprising that we saw take place in the Midwest in the United States you know, in Wisconsin, where almost 100,000 people have been protesting for the longest time to, you know, have their rights maintained as workers. And then they ended up really losing that battle because the bill they were protesting against got passed. Sure. So you, as one of the people who deems it important to be calling for a revolution, for the people to stand up, what are the chances of the people winning that kind of revolution if we saw the biggest protest in a while and they unfortunately for the people did it's, not it's easy work out. it's easy stop voting for democrats and republicans vote for anyone else jesse ventura thank you for your time with us thank you appreciate it